back to another Random Gleanings. Today we're recording. It's uh, November 7th. Chris, we got a few charts to go through. We're talking markets. We got some recommendations. And I'm going to start here with Liz Young, who put out an interesting tweet that we we both came across. Yep. Um, And what she's effectively saying, we'll throw this up, is that analysts seem to have a trend of predicting upside every, you know, when they're looking out 12 months. Yeah. Am I misinterpreting that? No. I mean, this is bottom-up price targets, which means all 500 companies in the S&P 500, if you add them all up together, that implies a price target of 5035 on the S&P, which is definitely higher than we are now. We're just a little shy of 4400 That's right. The key here that I think most folks would agree with, and we'd love to hear from you either on agreement or disagreement, is this doesn't feel like an average environment, though. You know, they normally don't. But, uh, you know, if you look at the information that goes with it, um, it doesn't look like one either. There's a lot of... Th- so I'm going to let you cover some of yeah. the, the technical so stuff and then market stuff. I want to cover the personal stuff, what it feels yeah. like, because I think that that's what most people are out there feeling. And Mohamed El Arian, uh, a former bond manager, strategist, has, uh, a, I think, a good summary of what it is that people are feeling, because what he says here is the economy remains uh, strong, and yet people's opinion of the economy is... Not strong, right? And so, why is that? And he says that you know the one word answer is of inflation, um, but but so that is certainly what is people are feeling, and and you can read this on your own. But um, it, it's been a difficult time out there on a personal level for most people. But then yeah. you look under the surface. There's some there's some things that that uh, I think make this maybe not average time frame either. Well, uh, Elarian ran uh, Harvard's endowment for a time period. Was out at Pimco. I mean, he certainly knows what he's talking about. Um, if you look next chart at, at the numbers, I mean, so these are earnings. More Liz Young. So we've been in earnings season. We're almost done with earnings season mm-hmm. now. And I mean, seventy percent of the S and P's reported a common theme is that beats really haven't gone up, but misses have gotten just absolutely lambasted, right? Right. Which, I mean, there have been times in history that haven't been very good, and that's what was going on. Um, Next chart, and and company guidance has played a big role. Consensus expectations uh, were for significant margin expansion in, in the fourth quarter and beyond. Why? Because the expectation is that you would have uh, lower costs now because inflation would roll over and interest rates would begin to decline and whatever. Well, guess what? They haven't at this right, point. Right. So, you know, the fourth quarter earnings estimates are down 5% in the last 30 days. Okay, fine. All right. So all she's saying is, look, it's it's a little bit negative out there, mm-hmm. okay? Because this environment's been really, really hard to navigate. Again, Looking at the next chart, so these are the manufacturing data through um, October, okay? Manufacturing is what, 20%? Uh, 20, 25, something like that, yep. Uh, of the U.S. economy. That's right. Right. Okay. So manufacturing is is in contraction. At anything below 50 is contraction. So at the end of the day, what you've got is manufacturing cooling. And then what you've also got, next chart, looking at services, which is the other 75-ish percent of the economy, it's still in positive territory, but not by much. And in fact, it missed this go around. 53 was the expectation and, and 51.8 was what it came in. And and the error is added by us. But, you know, it's not trending in the right direction. That's correct. So, you know, look, I'd like to be positive, but I mean, that's cooling information. Meanwhile, going to the next chart, you found this for Charlie Bolello. Yeah. I think, you know, one, one of the things we touched on last week was kind of the last two years, right? And, and, you know, I can't say that we can take credit for uh, for people coming out with a two-year chart, but that's what Bellello is talking about here. And all of the names that we've been hearing so much about, the enormous eight or the magnificent seven, he covers the eight stocks, including Netflix, as well as the S&P and the NASDAQ, save NVIDIA, Microsoft, and Apple by a, by a hair, None of them, none of the rest are positive over that two year period. Right. Including I mean, Apple, the indices. Apple's almost flat as a pancake, right. 2%. Yep. So look, I mean, NVIDIA is the shiner. Okay, fine. And if, and if you could, con, you know, if it was on your bingo card that AI was going to kick in in the first right. half of 2023, 
and NVIDIA was going to be... The sole beneficiary, yeah, predominantly. Yeah, great. Right. Good mm -hmm. on you, mm -hmm. okay? But otherwise, what you've had is effectively negative 6% if all you own was stocks. But if you own more than just stocks, I mean, again, like we shared in the chart last week, I mean, it was it's effectively double digits if you've got any negative if you've got any asset allocation type stuff, right. meaning if you're an 80-20 investor, which means 20% is in bonds, and presumably most folks out there are going to have exposure to like small and mid caps too. Well, look at this chart. On a two-year number, the Vanguard mid cap ETF is down almost 19%. Okay. That's through last night. Right. Okay. Look at small caps down 23%. Mm. Okay. Through last night. For the last, what is that, 23 months? Right. Basically, 22, yep. 23 months. So if you think this is a normal environment or that stocks should just be going up, look, they're, they're not. They're going right. sideways to down. And that's okay. We'll get through this time period. But playing defense has been right. Playing de defense may continue to be right. And ultimately, we got to get to the other side of this. And that may involve... That may involve some slowdown. So having some cash earning 5.4% is not all that bad. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I mean, as much as, again, the analysts want to predict a 16% thing, and if you go back and look at that chart again from Liz, uh, Liz uh, Young, it's, what she's saying is they're always predicting that. They're right. always predicting that. And, and, and I think what we've covered here is, well— Maybe it's not a, a normal environment. Maybe it's just not. So let's look at the next chart, because I think this is fantastic. So here's what's been going on in the last little bit. Earnings multiples have been coming down, mm -hmm. and that's actually a good thing. So it's a healthy thing, certainly in this rate environment, for if, sure. If you go back to April of 2022 and look at anything we put out, we put out a chart that looked at the average uh, multiple that the market traded for in certain inflationary environments, right? And listen, like it or not, we're still in around a call it a four ish, four to five percent inflationary kind of environment. We're not there yet. All right. So what's happening? Well, one of the things that chart said back in April of last year was, hey, multiples come down when inflation's higher. Right. So what what's what are multiples doing? Well, they're they're coming down, They've come down. Yeah. And that's good. So earnings can continue higher, but that doesn't mean the multiple won't come down right. at that's the right. same time. That's right. Right. The valuation or the price that someone's willing to pay for it. And I think in this chart, you can see that there's been a very, you know, a pretty significant separation between, um, the large cap names, right, yep. and those smaller ones that we you just showed got so beat up in the last couple of years, right? right? That, that's right. So you know, again, going back and looking at small and mid caps down double digits are almost you know twenty percent for mids and twenty three percent for smalls. I mean, those things are cheap, really cheap. They are. So you know, that's good information, right? Now, do you want to buy small companies going it, it into any potential slowdown? You know, maybe, maybe not. It would right? seem that they're better priced for that slowdown right now than than their big brethren are, right? You would um, think from that. a multiple standpoint. But yes, it, it is reason to to remain cautious, but um, but open. You know, keep your eyes open. Yeah. So, and that describes where we are and how we view things. I mean, we still have to play some defense. We still have to own what's still working, mm -hmm. or at least hanging on. Right. And. Um, Meanwhile, we we bide our time. Things are going to get better. They will. And, you know, but but having some defense and having someone who's paying attention to that, it just matters. Yep. It absolutely matters. Okay. All right. So I we started a new show. Okay. Let's um, hear it. It's called Lessons in Chemistry. It's on Apple TV+. Plus, and I am sure I will like it more soon. There was some depressing stuff to... Uh, go through first it's about a lady who is uh has a master's in chemistry um from one of the california universities but she's a lady. back before this was you know something that m many ladies had access to yeah right? i, I mean this said. this is uh yeah and there's a whole lot of chauvinism going on okay. a whole lot of she doesn't get the same opportunities because she's a woman um uh you know having all girls in my house it it it's it fires you up yeah, and sure. then 
some of the roadblocks that are in front of her. It appears to lead in, in a positive direction. I'm, I'm excited to see we'll, what that we'll is. We'll, we'll, we'll look forward to your uh, recap once yeah. we figure out how this has gone for this young lady. That's good. Yeah, it, it, it seems like a pretty low point through the second episode. So, um, yeah. you know, hopefully it picks up from here. But okay. it's, it's good. Well, staying on the theme of uh, somewhat of a hard watch, but a good watch, um, uh, All the Light you, We Cannot See on Netflix was rated as the number one show. My wife recognized it from a book she read a couple years ago, and she likes to watch those things, and I like to watch those things rather than read all those books. But um, it has been good. We're, I think, uh, on the fourth episode, which I think that's all it is, so it's, it's short and sweet, but a blind young girl going through World War II is a French person. Uh, French young lady, uh, helping her father, um, uh, just, uh, you know, um, protect some of France's most precious gems from the Nazis. So it's, again, it's a fictional story, but a good one. And I, I'm a sucker for, you know, period pieces. So right. it's good. For sure. It's good. I'd recommend it. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Uh, thanks as always for watching. We're grateful to you. Please do click the subscribe button. If you want to be notified when we post, please click the bell as well. And please share with a friend. Um, again, I mean, we want to say positive things, look, but I mean, you've got to have some degree of understanding where we are in this cycle. And I, I, you know, candidly, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, this year is positive. Well, hang on, zoom out a little bit. Let's just, let's just be patient. Yep. Yep. Thanks as always. Absolutely. We'll see you soon.